and unified. Surviving off of what a bond and earth could provide. But some were satisfied. They started conquering folks. Implemented governments into oppress and control. Unpiled empires of power and greed. And now a few live in excess and the rest are in need. But simply beating some and bribing others couldn't succeed. They needed hate to separate and some fear to feed. See, we're inclined to be kind and think from the heart. So they devised new systems that would keep us apart. They invented class and then in race, gender and religion. With precision, they conquered through division. Divide and conquer, separate and control And keep us fighting each other to set the empire's goal So don't look behind the curtain, don't follow the strings Keep us lighting the symptoms of while you spread the disease Western colonists erase the tribal way of life And invent is safe to separate by artificial lines Warring tribes group together to destabilize And pit the natives on each other, keep the enemy disguised My understanding is that on September 10th, uh, there was a negotiated safe, I don't know if it happened on the 10th, but by the 10th, a negotiated safe zone or no fire zone. Um, can you talk a bit about that? Somebody? Plo? No. Well, I'll, 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 uh, if you like about the, the safe zone, there, first of all, there's, there's two things here, and I'm going to raise them both at the same time because okay. they're, they're interlocking in a sense. Uh, they had what they referred to as the eye in the sky, okay? okay? And people should understand that that whole process, everything that happened in that camp and around that camp, uh, was under camera surveillance 24 hours a day from uh, sometime uh, it, about mid-August um, until the completion of, of that, uh, that whole attack on those people in the camp. Now. That must be clear. The other thing that, that has to be clear in people's minds is that the RCMP agreed to what they refer to as a no-shoot zone. And they not only put that in writing and sent it into the camp in letter form, but they also uh, sent, accompanied the letter with a map clearly outlining the no-shoot zone. Now, uh, it has to be clear to everyone that is listening that that was established and it was clearly understood by way of the letter and we should have that letter here somewhere yeah, yeah we'll probably show that actually or... um, that as long as the people inside stayed within their boundaries that they would not be shot at or attacked or any of those other kinds of things and that the RCMP would stay outside of those boundaries that were established as well and that was referred to as the no zone. And I believe there was a road where people could go to get water and food or supplies. That was, in, that was within the no shoot zone. So here's a, here's a, a Mountie by the name of Duplanty. He says he was asked under direct testimony. So you were aware that there was a safe zone after September the 10th? And he answers yes. Question. You also have a notation about Inspector Kimball advising that there was no ceasefire in effect and and that any target of opportunity our members call do you recall that i do it refers to kimball who in what i think we need to identify and focus very clearly here for the sake of this show and this case is that there were a number of incidents as bill is saying here that the eye in the sky shows that they were lying out of their teeth when they took the stand you know, the various uh, uh, RCMP and Earth Squad members that came to testify. And those major ones that we're highlighting today would be September the 10th or September the 11th and September the 12th. The truth about what happened with the truck, the truth about uh, with the blowing up of the truck and the shooting at the occupants, um, and the, uh, the shooting at a native man walking alongside, of the, uh, alongside the lake on September the 12th. Uh, in here, Kimball gives it very clearly in the testimony, who uh, was one of the head, one of the head of the RCMP at the camp during the time of the, of the standoff, he makes it very clean and very clear that they understood that there was a no-shoot zone, there was a ceasefire zone, and yet the people that were uh, either blown up in their truck and shot at with hundreds and if not thousands of rounds uh, and shot the next day, the government the government clearly knew that the RCMP was in violation of that ceasefire. And this guy, Kimball, 
to give them the, uh, the green light and the testimony, and the testimonies right here, was giving them the green light to shoot, to kill, knowing that they were violating their own ceasefire agreements with the occupants inside the camp. I wanted to talk about the red truck because we do have the video, like you said earlier. Um, this is footage that actually, I guess the RCMP or, yeah, RCMP uh, were footage. taking themselves and it's been uh, presented in court. So what do we see uh, when we're looking at this, um, this clip? I'll, I'll address that really quickly. Yeah. What we hear, first of all, let's go back to the standoff last year. What we hear, we hear the RCMP telling the public that of the incident of the red truck and what they told us in the beginning the official press report was uh, Peter Montague stated very clearly that two occupants went out with a red truck outside of the perimeters of the ceasefire agreement went when they were fully armed that they were spotted as being fully armed with guns they would travel down the road they'd had to use a disabling device to stop the machine so that they could arrest them. But when the occupants were stopped by the disabling device, they jumped out the car, they grabbed AK-47s, and they started shooting at the police. Dosanj, the attorney general of this province, without investigating the incident, took that report and said that there were three occupants on a press, re press release and said there were three occupants that jumped out the car and started firing on the police. That was the justification for 20,000 rounds of bullets that were fired strictly by the RCMP that day. And what you see in the film, in this film, with their own eye in the sky, is you see the truth that one, the occupants did not have any guns in their hands, that while they were driving down the road just after they were going to pick up the elders, that while they were driving down the road, they were trying to get water for the elders. They, this disabling device, which is really plastic explosives, which is nothing less than a very powerful landmine of itself, runs over the landmine, hits the landmine, and you see the, the, the truck blowing up, the whole front of the, the truck hood blowing back. You then see the two occupants miraculously thrown out with no guns in their, in their hands, thrown out by the impact of the explosion. They run and seek sanctuary by trying to run, uh, swim across the lake. Yeah, I think you see And then you the see corner. an APC come right forward and ram the truck. Mm -hmm. with, if they didn't kill them, if they didn't kill those unarmed occupants the first time, they were going to kill it with the APC. Then the next thing you see, you see a dog jumping out of the back of the truck, and you see two sharpshooters right there alongside of, uh, alongside of the road blasting the dog and killing the dog. That is where the first shots went out that day on September the 11th. That is what started the incident of September the 11th. Okay. Then you see two people going across the lake in the eye in the sky. They're swimming. And you see thousands or hundreds of rounds being hit on the water looking like missiles. You see two people surrendering when they come out of the lake. And you see the RCMP shooting at them before they tell them to put their hands up. One woman, one person gets shot. And gets shot. And it just follows a pattern of all the lies that were told to you, the public. You, the public, were told many lies. Mm -hmm. You were told a lie about an August the 27th event where two people were, were supposed to have been shot with, in the flat jackets. There is no testimony they, the, where they had an eye in the sky, the film to that August 27th event. They never introduced it into court because it never existed so that they could gain your sympathy against the occupants of the camp. So, on September the 4th, they used the excuse. They knew damn well that there was nobody inside of that camp shooting at the suburban at night, stalking them. But they used it in their own night, night uh, radar photo shows that nobody was there. They used that excuse. Their own forensic analysis shows it was hit by a tree branch. But they used that as an excuse to bring in the APCs. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk about the APCs a bit because um, to give an idea of what that is, because in the visuals, it, you know, it's hard to tell. Like, is it tank size? Are we talking military here? The they're, they're 13 tons. They're 13 tons uh, armored personnel carriers. They look like tanks to me. Um, they had uh, at one point.
four of them were very, very close to the, the camp and uh, firing thousands of rounds. Uh, this is on September 11th. This is after they bombed the truck. And um, they, they told the public that the people in the red truck who were on their way to pick up elders and to pick up water, they told the public that, that the people in the truck were shooting at them. But in court, we've had testimony from about six or seven different police officers, um, as well as military, that say they, nobody was shooting at them, that it was them who were shooting at the people. These poor officers didn't realize that we have the videotape from the sky, and it clearly shows that he's just sauntering down to the lake. He's wearing a bright pink shirt and black pants. He's not carrying a, a gun. In the middle of a wide open field. Yeah, in the wide open field. <laughs> and, like, and like Bill says, right, it's necessary for the people out here, all people out here, to hear the transcripts. Yep. So if I can, I want to read this Good. section right here, okay? okay? This is the same Kimball given authorization to make the kill, okay? Uh, how was he carrying it? This is, he, it was slung over his shoulder as if he had a gun, which he only had a coat from the camera. What part of that could you see? From my observation of West Cam, I could see the silhouette, silhouette of the rifle and the barrel in the shadows. Did you continue to watch this person? Yes, I did. What did you see happen? He continued to walk on, on the road, and then he veered off the road towards making his way towards the lakefront area. At some point, you indicated that he took his jacket off. Is that correct? Yes. Did you make any note of that, or do you recall? what he was wearing under his jacket. It appeared to be a reddish toned t-shirt or a shirt of some sort. And at that time <clears throat> that the jacket was removed, could you see the rifle that you described? Yes, I could. And where was that rifle? It was still slung on his shoulder. After the jacket was removed, was there, where was the rifle? He returned, after he removed his jacket, he returned the rifle to his shoulder location. What happened next? I had an expert marksman positioned across the lake observing the movements of the camp and based on, it was my decision at that time, based on the events of the day before and the previous shootings of our members, I authorized the members across the lake to shoot at the individual. I authorized the members across the lake to shoot at the individual walking down the lake. And when you look at the picture of the West Cam, you will see this man is not carrying a gun. Mm -hmm. But in fact, that RCMP officer, marksman, should be cited for attempted murder, just as the marksmen that gave the okay to blow up the truck should be cited for attempted murder, just like a number of people involved in this situation which the police architectured and manufactured kills should be cited for attempted murder, and as Bill said, and makes it very clear, as he's told us and, and the rest of it, that the people, you yourself, let the evidence show for itself, but you be the judge and see if it is in time for the people, you people who have been lied to, all of us that have been lied to, it is a time for us to call for a citizen's inquiry. Instead of paying $50,000 for a trial to cover up for the truth of what happened at the lake, and the jurisdictional arguments that they're trying to cover up. Why don't we put our monies as peoples together and look for getting an inquiry as to what happened here? Because certainly the charge of genocide is not, not stated lightly here in this incident. Okay. We only want people that can help us then. No, no. These two can't. Okay. Did you find somebody today that can help us with a disinformation or a smear campaign? Uh, I was talking to David Ward, National Library. And there's their source. Yeah. You know. Go ahead. All right, all right. Smear campaigns are our special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought the other Yeah, and they were going to No, they're not going to hear a tribunal. No, no. It's not even going to Okay. We only want people that can help us then. No, right? no. These two can't. Okay. Did you find somebody today that can help us with a disinformation or a smear campaign? Uh, I was talking to David Ward, National Aboriginal. And there's their source. Yeah. You know. All right, all right. Smear campaigns are 